Did you catch yourself thinking, where's that artist I used to enjoy about 10 years ago and now I hear nothing about? Well, high chances, they're right here on YouTube because YouTube and other social media platforms offered a great opportunity for people of old media reinvent their careers and move into the creator economy. And in today's video, I wanna talk about one of those phoenixes rising from the ashes of their past glory. Welcome to the Here's T channel. My name is Tahir and today I'm talking about Steve-O, his surprising example of what it's like to be a tenacious creator who's trying to make it in this new world and the several characteristics that helped him achieve that success. Let's do this. I'm keeping this video punchy, so let's jump straight into the first character trait that Steve-O described on his podcast with Casey Neistat. I'm in this body, like, to make it happen. And like, if, if a person isn't contributing to like me accomplishing some kind of a goal that matters to me, then f no, I don't want to chat over dinner. And I feel so strongly about that. I have no interest in a, in a conversation or spending time socializing uh -huh. because that doesn't that doesn't advance objective, a goal. This resonates with me on so many levels. I'm bad friend and I can be a bad family member because of that level of focus. When there's something in front of me and I'm trying to achieve it, anything that does not contribute directly to me progressing on that path is considered a distraction. It's harsh, but I think this is what helps Steve O go through that transition, especially once the glory days of Jackass completed. Yes, he's one of those guys from the original cast of the Jackass TV show on MTV. There's so many things that happen to this guy on screen screen and especially off screen that we were not even aware of. And the primary one is the fact that throughout the entire shooting process of the Jackass first season, the guy was dead broke. I made less than $1,500 after taxes for the entire first season of Jackass. So I was desperate for money. And the very first people that reached out to me with a paying gig, I couldn't sell my soul fast enough. Once MTV forgot what M stands for in their name and started producing more shows like Jackass, Little Like Ridiculousness, one would argue they've been that pre-YouTube YouTube that was primarily on the old media. So no wonder that shows like the ones that Steve-O used to be part of on the TV screen are now relatively successful on the YouTube, TikToks, Instagram reels of the world. What is important to understand in terms of difference between the two is that when it was in the TV old media world, Steve had to have the support and the crew cast from the producers coming from the MTV, traveling with him, carrying the cameras, carrying all the equipment, doing all the editing, providing that publishing platform that MTV was. So there was such a high level of dependency for someone like Steve-O who is broke, who is trying to make something out of themselves. And that large conglomerate on the Viacom that essentially will just do what's profitable for them. But even then, at the risk of completely losing the career once the show is completed, Steve-O in his mind realized that he has to push hard and he has to create the opportunities for himself. And when I got to LA, everybody said, oh, you better strike while the iron's hot. Your show's gonna get canceled. You're gonna be a flash in the pan, it has been. And it was so scary. And I'm like, I'll make the iron hot. And I think that like, that has a lot to do with why I just never stopped hustling. As the Jackass TV series completed, as the movies came and gone, and as Steve-O participated in different projects, he realized that the technology is caught on and the YouTube, other social media platforms created this creator economy environment that allowed him to now take his talent elsewhere and be independent from those conglomerates managing his career. Steve started popping on my radar through other collaborations with the creators who were pretty big on the platform back then. Among them, none other than David Dobrik whose content to some extent would reminisce what Jackass used to do, maybe just a little bit toned down. And Steve-O participated in multiple videos, he gained a lot of the traction with the audience that David Dobrik acquired, and slowly he kept growing the audience of his own. On his primary channel, the kind of content he produces is very much reminiscent of what Jackass used to be. This is what I call the creative prison. The topic that I discussed over here about how certain creators, once you kind of like land in a niche with a particular type of content, you will have a very hard time climbing out of that bowl. Steve continued to diversify himself in the kind of content that he produces. He wrote a book, he started selling the merch, he even created his own hot sauce, 
two types of them. Now, he even started his own podcast and he has both a dedicated podcast YouTube channel and a Clips podcast YouTube channel. The guy's been acting bit for bit how a lot of other creators evolve their career on YouTube. The creator economy is so powerful in the sense that it offers relatively the same playbook and the same set of tools, and it's up to you as a creator what kind of tools you would wanna leverage to grow your audience and grow your career and push kind of like that company that you're building around yourself forward. No wonder that someone like him, although his entire audience resided outside of the new media and kind of like in that old <laughs> TV world, he now was able to leverage the latest trends, the technology that he had, and start slowly amassing the new audience in this new venue that he pursued, thanks to how far the creator economy developed. And this is where all of the technology, the tools and everything else was there. There were some playbooks. One item I want to make sure we don't miss is that that final trait that Steve O shared in the following segment. For me, probably the most uncomfortable question is, are you happy? And the answer is, no, I'm not happy because what the, what's that going to get me? Like content? <laughs> I'm so grateful that I'm not happy because that's the, that's the drive. That's the fire under my ass. I'm not, I never want to be happy. Happy. In my Hamilton video, I shared how I think half of the reason why I liked the musical was the song Satisfied and how it perfectly encompassed the feeling that I have and clearly Steve shares where you have to have that constant hunger to push the envelope forward. You have to work through any kind of problem and you can work through any kind of problem, whether you're in the business, professional, entrepreneurial world, you're working on the arts and crafts, that tenacity and the willingness to work hard through any kind of problem and just sticking with it. And once you solve that problem, you celebrate for five seconds, you find the next problem to solve and you keep that momentum going. In this world where you compete not only against those handful of people who have access to TV and radio broadcast, now you compete with every single person who has an internet connection, a cell phone with a camera. And if there is a guy out there who makes ice cream, records it and posts it on TikTok and can amass 10 million plus followers, so can you and so can anyone like Steven who transitions over from the old media to this new world of the creator economy. It takes a lot of courage to put yourself into the new uncomfortable situation. It takes a lot of tenacity and hard work and that constant unsatisfaction with your progress. It used to be that in the past, the primary barrier were those gatekeepers in front of the studios not letting your content through on the TV. Now, the gatekeepers are really non-existent. Your primary challenge right now is the fact that there are millions and millions of creators all over the world constantly pushing different kind of content out there. Netflixes and Hulus and Disney's of the world constantly producing even more content. So that eyeball attention that the creator economy fights for over and over again is so hard to get. And this is why, even if I don't enjoy the content that Steve-O primarily produces on his main channel, and I kind of enjoy his podcast discussions, I do still have a huge huge amount of respect for the guy because he had to go through a transition on his own. He had to figure it all out. And ultimately at the end, now that you look at his main channel, his secondary channels, at his position in this creator economy, I have nothing but respect for the guy and all the efforts and all the hard work he had to invest to make this a successful venture. What a cool dude. Have you been a fan of Jackass or Steve O? Do you think his story and that transition is inspirational? And who are other old media celebrities who made a very good transition over into this new world of the creator economy across all the different social media platforms. Share your thoughts and ideas in the section below. This is why I always remind people that my kids or the kids of their generation, they will not really know the celebrities on the TV. I don't even know if they will watch TV. They will only recognize people who they see on the screens of their phones, their tablets, and their laptops. This is this new world that we entered. The creator economy by itself might be not a new thing because you could argue Old media was a version of the creator economy, but anything that we currently refer to creator economy in this world is really based on the social media, the chain of websites that supports the different business ventures and different ways to monetize your creative efforts and that level of independency as a creator that you achieve once you enter this world. And the benefit is, you control your destiny. The downside, you're fighting and competing against every single other person who does social media who want to keep posting and producing the content on their platform. So it's a Daggy Dags world. It's a tough one, but there are a lot of inspirational stories out there. So if you're seeking more of them, there are plenty of them on this channel because I'm here every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video with some of your friends. Here are a few more videos for you to enjoy and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>